Once the masters of the galaxy, powerful enough to hold back the Necron dynasties at their height as well as expand their borders, the Eldari were a galactic power to be marvelled. Through arrogance and excess they were sundered and now they stand as an equal player in the story of Warhammer 40,000, a shattered empire to act as a lesson few seem willing to learn. 60 million years before the events of Warhammer 40k, before the Great Crusade and the Age of Darkness, the Old Ones battled with the Necron Tear. The recently converted metallic warriors fought the ancient gods and their children in what is referred to as the War in Heaven. If you're looking to learn a bit more on the build up from the Necron Tear and why they charged against the Old Ones, check out our video on the Necrons that I'll link below. Despite their change into these metallic warriors, the Old Ones and the Eldar were capable of defeating and pushing back the Catan and their forces with their superior psychic might and the Old Ones greatest weapon, the Webway. A secret plane of existence, a series of extra dimensional tunnels and passages that exists beyond both the material galaxy and the warp. The webway allowed the Old Ones and their allies to travel great distances undetected and quickly, ever outmaneuvering the Necrons and the Catan. Due to their soulless nature, the Necrons could not hope to meet the psychic might they faced with any of their own, so instead, a plan was put into place to level the playing field. Across the galaxy, the Necrons began to construct pylons and wards in order to shut out the warp. Their intention was to cut the Old Ones and the Eldar off from their powers, although this proved unnecessary and was abandoned part way through due to a development on the Old Ones side. The psychic might of the races that the Old Ones had created was growing as those races expanded, and the groaning of the warp was felt more and more, the growing pains of psychic empires rippling across the galaxy. This all coalesced into a grand cataclysm, a storm within the warp that awoke and gave form to terrifying psychic predators. The souls of those psychers not prepared or trained well enough were torn from them, these newborn demons collecting any that they could reach and dragging them into the depths of the warp. The sea of souls churned and began to reform forging into the realm of chaos. The forces of chaos and the predators of the warp began to descend upon the old ones, the Eldar and anyone else who dared to tap into the warp's power. They were being attacked from within and the Necrons and Catans pressed their advance from without. Aspects of the webway were breached from the Immaterium and webway gates were destroyed by the Eldar to avoid them falling into corrupt hands. In the end, the Old Ones were defeated, their children left to carry on their legacy as the Necrons fled to their deep sleep. After all this time of war, hardship and loss, it was time for the mantle of galactic dominion to fall to the Eldari. They flourished in this new era, their technology only advancing further as their empire spread across the stars. At the peak of their power, nothing was beyond their reach. They learned and advanced, never holding themselves back with concerns of, should I? Only seeking to learn if they in fact could. They were confident to the point of arrogant, and it would be this attitude that would prove to be their downfall. For the longest time before that, however, they knew only prosperity and power. Even when their millennia long lives ended, their souls would travel to the care of their gods, where they would be safeguarded until reborn anew, re-entering into a galactic empire that stood as gods compared to the primitive races still developing on their homeworlds. The issue is, is that when you live this long, especially with such a drive and need to learn and experience new things, you kind of start to run out of new things to experience. The Eldar's advanced culture needed them to neither work nor cook, food and resources being abundant to them. And so with a thousand years of free time, they started to get a bit weird with it. 
Many would surrender to their most hedonistic impulses, with exotic cults dedicated to sensual excess and esoteric knowledge popping up all over the place. The more traditional and safer work hobbies and pursuits were cast aside, considered dull rather than their previous more noble title. The Eldar constantly searched for more. More experience, more knowledge, more fun. This level of need was unhealthy to say the least, and a corrosive influence on their souls, scratching at their perfect society until it fell to anarchy. The pleasure cult soon took control of the Eldar way of life, and all consuming was their mandate. That's not to say all Eldar were on board with this change, with some not liking what they were becoming. These Eldar fled from their own people, seeking life in isolation, returning to the old world and living as exodites. These Eldar lived pure and noble lifestyles, hoping to restore the damage that centuries of decadence had done to their souls. For the masses that remained, however, their lusts bred criminals and killers, torture and murder becoming a fun way to pass the time. Worlds were converted into hellish play dens, and even parts of the webway were given over to these dark and sadistic pursuits. Even more Eldar chose to draw the line here, seeing that something wasn't quite right with the state of things. These Eldar embarked upon gigantic world ships that they called craft worlds, and set sail for life in the void. They too practiced discipline, but their methods were stricter and more defined, their temptations now too great to be battled by anything other than complete rigidity in their quest for purity. These craft worlders and the Exodites were laughed at by some of the Eldar, seen as foolish to shut themselves away from a good time. They wouldn't have the last laugh however, as their hunt for higher highs and darker pleasures was beginning to create waves in the warp. Eventually, these ripples became tidal waves of emotional energy, a storm beginning to manifest created from the depravity of the Eldar race. At the heart of this storm, a power so great it would rival the current members of the Pantheon of Chaos. With each world that they burned, this storm followed. As they feasted and laughed, this storm grew. With a roar of power and a crashing of energy, the storm broke on reality, the entity within bursting into existence to greet its creators. It carved a scar in space so deep that it still marks the starry sky, this area of space becoming known as the Eye of Terror, the birthplace of Slanesh. Slanesh tore out the heart of the Eldari Empire, killing billions of Eldar, consuming their souls and any other races that it could reach. The more it ate, the more it grew and the more that it craved. She who thirst, as the Eldar would call Slanesh, would carry an insatiable desire for the souls of the Eldar, reveling in their death and torture, just as the emotions that she was made from were birthed. The Eldar was tasting their own medicine and finding it foul when it was their turn to receive it. Those craft worlders and exodites that were far away enough from this epicenter were saved from this terrible end. Even their pantheon of gods were devoured, destroyed or captured by one of the gods of chaos, and the Eldar Empire was shattered, their race decimated, and all knew that their time of galactic dominance had come to an end. The age of Eldari had come and passed, and they accepted that they were doomed to merely survive, to live in this galaxy and witness the next grand empire come to claim what was once theirs. Over time, the galaxy has seen the Empire of Man arise, fall and rise once more. The forces of the Chaos Space Marines amass and torment space. The arrival of the Great Devourer and the swarms of the Tyranids, as well as the awakening of their ancient enemies, the Necrons. The Eldali have seen this all, and watched over it occur as they continue to fight for their survival. They might not have the strength that they once could boast, 
But the Eldar still have bite and refuse to cower before any who have stepped forwards to fill the grand power vacuum that the once Grand Eldar Empire has left behind. Personally, I think the fall of the Eldar and the birth of Slaanesh is one of the coolest parts of Warhammer 40k lore. Often we see elves as these old, knowledgeable people, aware that they're greater than you and not afraid to show it. It's refreshing then to see this elvish pride be their downfall, to such a degree that it literally creates a Chaos God and it rips a hole in reality that then allows Abaddon, millennia later, to grab a hold of reality and literally rip the galaxy in half. The Cicatrix Maledictum, the fall of Cadia and the Imperium Nihilus is all just another knock-on effect from the arrogance of the Eldar. And I'm all here for it. Slaanesh is a great Chaos God, and I think we'll be covering them in more detail on the channel soon, along with more on the Craft Worlds, the Exodites and the Yanari. If there's something in particular you want to see on the channel, drop me a comment below and I'll add it to the list. If you've enjoyed this video, don't forget to like and subscribe for more just like this. And as always, thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.